Good morning. Welcome. Tiger Palafox. I'm Brian Maine, John Vagnasco. Hope you had a good week. We're going to kick off the weekend with a great show. It is Tomato Mania time. We'll talk more about that as we uh, get into the show this morning a little bit later on. John is back. Tiger is back. Hey, guys, what a good time we had last week from uh, your place of employment, Tiger, Mission Hills Nursery. <laughs> my, my place of employment. Yeah, it was great. It was great being outside. The weather was beautiful. Right? Different little uh, setting, you know, rather than being in studio for the gardening show. We're sure. out there in the garden. So, yeah, it was a great time. And then the show came out really well. It was nice. I was, you know, you always anticipate problems when mm -hmm. anytime you leave the studio. Yeah. You go someplace where you're not comfortable with the audio, the uh, the, the visual, all that. And so far, so good. I, I watched the show back, and everything sounded good. And I'm sure if there were problems last week, we would have heard from our Facebook viewers. Oh, definitely. You know, right. they like but to jump in and chime and say, hey, yeah. what's going on? Can't hear you. Uh, the, which, which we appreciate. The assistant producers. The, all the assistant <laughs> producers. I like that. So good morning. We've got a good crew on board already. Um, we've got our closed captioning going, which uh, kicks off every week automatically yeah. on uh, at least my screen. Yeah. I'm wondering how many people sit and watch our show and how many people just kind of have it playing in the background and listening. Because... You know, it's just nice that they can kind of rewind, replay, go back, and be able to check on things if maybe you missed it the first time. Because as I'm driving in the car, I'm listening to a radio program. Uh, there was a station this week, Brian, 91X, that made an announcement. Oh, they yeah, 91X been around for their, years. Yeah, and they were going to change their kind of format or something. Again? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay. And um, so they, the thing was is, like, listen at this time. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'll be able to listen at that time. I won't know be in the car and it'd be nice to record it well they they do that garden Obviously, america we can't they're, they're trying to to uh keep their their listeners tuned in yeah you know for the yeah. ratings book or for whatever they get now how do they do it now some other way but th that's why you get those radio teases so they'll last longer and that's called time spent listening <laughs> that's a category in ratings All right. so you, you throw the tease out there go to a commercial break they make it sound like well, we're going to be right back with that information could be 10 15 30 minutes later yeah so, uh, but us, you can always rewind it. You can always replay yeah. it. It's always there for Our you. Our YouTube channel, yep. Garden America Radio Show, usually about two hours after our show, Daniel, our IT guy, uh, puts up the YouTube channel. So today's show, in case you miss anything, you want to watch it back, go to our YouTube channel, Garden America Radio Show. And as Tiger mentioned, even on our Facebook page, everything is categorized and yep. archived there as well. And John has such good information that. Sometimes you need to rewind it. John's been very quiet. <laughs> Hello, John. Good morning. Well, I'm, I'm quiet because I was looking at our Facebook feed, and Elizabeth brought up a point that we had talked about before the show. And she says that you say tomato, but she <laughs> says tomato. We're going to go back and forth with that today. And It's going to be a tomato-tomato kind of a show. Yeah. We are talking tomatoes, though. And I'll talk tomatoes. We can do that, tomato, tomato. Uh, with our new sound system, Tiger, how are we looking on Facebook Live? Are the it, levels where you want them? It looks good. It, I think maybe a little low. might be a little bit low, but, but we're working with it. We're working okay, with so it, those right? that are watching on uh, Facebook Live, let us know. We've got uh, new calibrations going on with our audio, new computers. So if we're coming in loud and clear, we'd like to hear from you. Just give us a thumbs up or say we sound good. Yeah, exactly. Carolyn and Kim are mentioning how much they enjoyed last week's show. All right. You know, being at Mission Hills Nursery. And uh, Kim from the Tucson Garden Club said that she even did some research on Kate Sessions. Oh, fun stuff. So she was able to. Um, Tiger, you, that, her, Brian, you must be getting a text. <laughs> you know, yeah. there on the side is that little button that you can just turn off. That was uh, our uh, off-site producer saying that we sound good and look good. Oh. Um, we just wanted to make sure. We're 10 minutes into this. Not quite 10 minutes in. But uh, yeah. anyway, yeah, so, so getting back to what you were saying, John, about uh, – the research on Kate Sessions. Well, and I was going to say that is a fun rabbit hole to go down because there's so many branches for Kate Sessions in San Diego. I mean, A, obviously her developments in Balboa Park and who right. she was and the plant explorer and the nursery. But then, I mean, let's be real. At the time, we talk about this all the time about her. She was a woman in a man's world that was really literally moving mountains for San Diego and planting things and all this and then you know you hear about these big uh big money players with with san diego at the time the marston family oh yeah the, um, you know there used to be marston's uh department store downtown right exactly and, and i mean yeah. that's you know the families and and there's all these old money families and she was right there with him but i don't think and again maybe down the rabbit hole of 
her research, I don't think she was ever a big money person. Like, I don't think she ever had lots of lots of money, you know, like these people that she was working with and everything. Right. She never married. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny about Well, about the that? reason I say that is because she only had her own income. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if she had family money or I don't know. Do you know where Kate Sessions Park is in PB? Yes. Okay. So growing up in Pacific Beach as a kid, it was always, we're going to Kate, go to Kate Sessions Park. Uh, Kate Sessions this. Well, I had no idea who Kate who Sessions she was. was. School, it school was, was Kate Sessions? Yeah, just, it was a name. And it wasn't until years later when I went to one of John's seminars and uh, learned about Kate Sessions. Yeah. That was a great seminar. You had to do that again. That was great. Beverly Nichols, Kate Sessions, all in one seminar by John. Ooh. It was fantastic. Jeez. I did give a presentation on the trees of Balboa Park to uh, the Friends of Balboa Park. Uh-huh. Which in it was the largest group I ever spoke to. There were 500 people there. Ooh, intimidating. Yeah. Well, I've spoken to 75,000 people many times <laughs> broadcasting football games. At yeah. The, yeah, I was going to say. Actually yeah. live, not even on the radio, but live, yeah. which is a little more uh, treacherous because if you make a mistake on the radio, nobody's watching. They don't know you, that you've said something wrong. But do that in front of 75,000 people, and it's like, okay, how do I handle this? Yeah, but all you had was the mic. You didn't have have to do a PowerPoint. No, no, you had to be all organized. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that said, we got that business out you of the way. You had to be spontaneous, though. What's that? You you had to be spontaneous. Yes, but I have good spotters. If you have good spotters, you have to rely on your spotters. We're getting off track. <laughs> we can do sports another time. We've hey, we've had tomatoes. several. We've had several people comment on Facebook about how good we sound. Yes, that the sound is clearer. Yeah. Oh. So happy to hear that. You know what? Maybe it's because the levels are down a little bit on your Maybe. end. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the behind the scenes. We talk, we've talked about tomatoes a few times this morning because why? We're having some yeah, discussion? Yeah, we're having Scott Digg from Tomato Mania join us from Rogers Garden where we've one of their Scott first on? events Before? is going to be taking place this weekend. Yeah. So, How about the Mania. weather this week? Ooh. Uh, it, you, it, you know, we, we always tell careful. people, we always tell people, you know, just because you see tomatoes and peppers in yeah. the store, it's not time to plant them. Now, tomatoes are a little bit hardier than peppers. And we're in Southern California going into March. Yep. So tomatoes are going to be good. Now's a good Perfect. time to buy your tomatoes. Yeah, I mean, we, you and I talk about it. Like February is the last cold month right. you know, that we worry about here. Yeah. So we're at the end of it, ready to go now. Yeah, when you said you brought up the weather briefly, and I said we got to be careful because we're going to start complaining about how cold it was here. <laughs> when a lot of our people who are watching and listening are still under snow. Yeah. But, but be that as it may, when you talk about 35, 40 degrees where we live <laughs> – that's cold. About five miles from the coast, that, that's very cold. Uh, 35 is cold. For you know us. what this weather has been really good for? The, uh, the heat and then the cold and then hot again and then cold again. It's been great for germinating rose seeds. <laughs> the hot and cold? Yeah. Yeah. They, because they like to be keeping it guessing. They're supposed to, they're supposed to be, uh, they're supposed to get a cold treatment before they're planted, usually like six to eight weeks. And this year I put up a thousand rose seeds. Wow. And, I I just planted them straight in pots outdoors, so I didn't put them in the refrigerator. And I usually get between 5 and 10% germination, and sometimes worse than that. But so far, I've got close to 50 plants that have come up. Out of 1,000? Out of 1,000. So that's 5% already. Yeah, without without the efforts that you say you did right, before. Right, right. So that's so, really good. You're I'm hoping something. that by the time we... We do the remote from my house, which we're, I think we're planning like uh, late April, mid Correct. to late April. Right. Yep. That I'll have some rose seedlings blooming. Ooh. And if they bloom earlier than that, I'll bring them here in studio. Some exclusive releases. Yeah, so now that our remote last week went off without a hitch, knock on wood, we're going to be doing more, hopefully, uh, with John mentioned his estate, and then maybe some of the uh, various areas around San Diego County as well, Balboa Park. Yeah. Have to have that good Ethernet connection. Yeah. Hey, speaking of that, uh, John's got the quote of the week. Oh. And then we're going to take like our first break and like uh, quote. come back with Scott Daigle. Going to be talking about tomatoes. <laughs> Daigle, right? Dig. Dig. Scott Dig. Daigle. Right. Okay. And the uh, quote of the week, Brian's from Anthony Bourdain. Tony. As you like to call him, Tony. He says, uh, I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to the day when I stop working. If I ever stop working. I like the idea of keeling over in my tomato vines in Sardinia or northern Italy. A little Godfather reference? Yeah, a little bit. I think mm -hmm. so. Hey, we've got a good evening. 
uh, on our Facebook page. Somebody obviously in a time zone where it's evening time. <laughs> so wherever you're listening, however That's you're so listening, fun, isn't it? we appreciate that. Facebook Live and our friends on Biz Talk Radio. This is last week's show. So thank you for joining us. We're going to take our first break. We're going to be talking about tomatoes today with Scott. So questions, comments right there on our Facebook page. I'm Brian Maine. John Bagnesco, Tiger Palafox, going to take a break. Back after these messages on BizTalk Radio. All righty, welcome back to the show. Those on BizTalk Radio, those on the Facebook Live. Uh, those on Facebook Live, they get to see me make the phone call kind of behind the scenes as well when we call our guest. Welcome to the weekend uh, today with uh, Brian, John, and Tiger. And, Scott, we are talking tomatoes, Tiger. Yeah, we're talking with Scott Dagg from Tomato Mania this morning. And, Scott, you're up at Rogers Gardens this morning, correct? Hello, yeah. Scott. Hey, you there, guys? There we go. Yeah, can you hear us? I got you. I got you. Beautiful. All right. Good morning. Good morning. How how is it going? You're up at Rogers Gardens, right? Yes, we're at Rogers Gardens, getting getting ready for day two, Tiger. We've got uh, we launched yesterday, so our season has officially started. We couldn't be more excited. Yeah, and then after you guys pretty much had a year off last year. You guys did you do one event or any events last year? I can't remember. You know what? We were pretty lucky last year, Tiger. We kind of changed our game plan a little bit, and we ended up we ended up doing a full schedule, but an altered altered sort of as so many people did, right? Yeah. Just an altered situation. So we had some extended stays where we where we didn't do our sort of everybody show up on a weekend kind of thing, mm -hmm. and we were very very lucky. So very you know grateful to have outdoor events that we could actually in which we could actually operate, and we spread it. We basically spread them out, and the entire the entire season did work. It was. Um, it was pretty phenomenal, and people got their got their great tomatoes and got to garden in this difficult time. So that was a that was a huge thing for us. Yeah, and uh, for our listeners that maybe aren't too familiar with Tomato Mania, Scott, will you give us a little bit of a rundown of what you're doing and and who you are? Thank you. So happy to listen. Tomato Mania in Southern California has been around for uh, for over 30 years, and it started at a nursery in Pasadena. And the idea was basically we're going to showcase amazing heirloom tomatoes. Uh, and, and 30 years ago is when that really wasn't happening, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to showcase some amazing heirloom tomatoes and make them available for the home gardeners. And that's what we've done as we built this through the years. We became a road show in the early 2000s, and we take this take this road show and pop up to different locations now exclusively to California. And um, again, every show is different. We've got large events, small events, events, and we roll out a collection of tomatoes like you've never seen before. Um, I have my good garden friends and and former even former former workers at the nursery where this started show up and we we share everything we can about tomatoes so we uh, we not only showcase them but we talk about how to grow them we provide everything else that you need for the season and uh, hopefully set you on your way to a great summer in the garden yeah and what a great opportunity to see a variety of tomatoes um i don't know if you can tell me an exact number but roughly how many varieties right now do you have up there at rogers at Rogers yesterday, at start, we were just shy of 250 varieties. Wow. Oh, my gosh. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I know, guys. It boggles even my mind, you know. But look, uh, I, I, tell, I tell people all the time, 
you know, it's the hard edit that's the difficult thing. There are about 7,000 varieties I can get seed <laughs> for these days. So yeah. we look through this list, and, and each year we jostle that, that group just a bit so it stays interesting and exciting. And, um, you know, we, we, we have to have the tried and truth, but every once, they, every once in a while they bounce off the list. <clears throat> but the other, the other thing that we're trying to do on a weekly, yearly, whatever, uh, garden basis is try to find that new, that new thing. Try to find that next step in tomatoes. And so that's what we do, too. We incorporate all that into our sales as we, as we go through the season. And, yep. again, I, I won't have – like, I will have some, some stuff later in the season that I don't have available. We just swap it out so much to, to keep it interesting for us and to keep it interesting for all our friends out there. That surprised me this year because when you think of tomato mania, you naturally think of heirloom varieties and uh, all the great varieties you're talking about and uh, talking right. about bringing back. And uh, I was a little surprised to see that this year's tomato of the year was a new tomato. <laughs> you like that. See, I've got to keep you guessing out there, right? <laughs> No, it's it's a it's a great one. Have you have you seen it? Have you are you are you you know what it is? Obviously, you know what it is. Are you saw it? Uh, I'm guessing it's bronze torch. <laughs> <laughs> You're guessing the one we've been screaming about for about a month and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about that? Absolutely. Well, first of all, um, bronze torch is is a hybrid, as you pointed out. Um, you know, we we hybrids are our friends. We 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 we're not going to discriminate here. We want great tomato, and you know, while hybrids often suffer from the cardboard tomato in january syndrome and people you know poo poo them um we know that you know hybrids are are they carry with them everything that modern tomato science can give them in most cases and that's not a bad thing especially for new gardens who want something that's a little bit more that's a little tougher that's a little bit more of a sure thing and this is one of those um not only is it is it sturdy right um it's a beautiful thing bronze torch is a small elongated cherry or a grape um, if you've grown Juliet before, if you've grown Blush, if you've grown Ico, these are tomatoes that um, it's, that it resembles, right? It can be rounded or pointed. We, we see it, we see that difference during the season. It's a beautiful dark brick red with green stripes, and even early in the season, you even see a little metallic flecking in there, a metallic striping like a gold in there. It's phenomenal. Uh, the plant is produces early, which is huge in my book. Um, that means it, it will obviously get, be, be among the first to produce in the in the in the front of the season. But for us in California, with our really long seasons, that also means when temps start to cool in the fall, it's still going. And wow. it did that last year in our test garden. We grew it in con- in a container. We grew it in the ground. It was it was uh, uh, terrific in both. Um, and uh, on top of all those things, it's delicious. It's got this amazing, really round what we call a round tomato taste. Not purely sweet like a lot of the cherries that we love so much. It's just interesting. It's just different. And guys, you know, it's kind of hard when when we pick a um, when we pick a beefsteak uh, as our as our t- potential tomato of the year. It's a little bit hard to get. You know, it's a little bit harder to do, to do taste tests around. Yeah. <laughs> but I traveled with little bundles of these little bags of these all summer last year, ha- passing them out and go, Hey, what do you think of that? What do you think of that? And um, it scores. It really does. It's an amazing tomato. Wow. Good to know. Hey. Scott, we have a uh, a listener that has a question, and I, I think you'll be able to help answer Is this, this Elizabeth? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, kind of an I'd interesting question, and it says, um, I cut open an older tomato the other day, and it was sprouting inside, so I put it in <laughs> soil. Will I get a plant, or is this just wishful thinking on my part? Well, it's not. The, the seed hasn't changed its spots, now has it? You know, we don't <laughs> see that often, but I have seen it. Uh-huh. And the... We, we, we know that the gel inside of, of a tomato um, is, is an inhibitor. It, it inhibits the seed from doing precisely what Elizabeth saw, right? And sometimes, uh, whether there's a, a, a not enough gel or not, no gel period or whatever, you do see some sprouting in there. And it's an odd and kind of a wonderful thing. Um, and Elizabeth, look, that, I don't know if you saved those or if you tried to seed them or whatever. Oftentimes, guys, they'll even seed and you'll see a couple, and like, you know, of its first, not true leaves, but you'll see you'll see more than just a little sprout in there. Wow! And so, if if she was able to if she was able to, to take that and plant it again, the, the seed should grow. Now, yes, it's been, it started in a very odd location, but you got to figure out that hey, under the ground is a pretty odd location too for yeah, seed, that, right? That Maybe for us true. anyway. Hey, so, hey, Scott, um, Scott, it might work. Yeah. Hey, Scott, sorry, we're going to have to take a, a break real quick. Um, when we get back, sure. we'll continue talking with Scott Dague with Tomato Mania. Yeah, a lot thank of questions you. so far. And, Scott, thank you very much, too. So, again, 
Uh, those on uh, Facebook Live, questions, comments, uh, as you just heard from Elizabeth, so on and so forth. We have a few more to get to as well, so keep those questions coming. It is uh, Tomato or Tomato Media as we continue our conversation with Scott. And by the way, those on BizTalk Radio, you can always tune in and watch us live on Facebook every week starting at 8.06 Pacific, 11.06 Eastern Time Zone, and that's a Garden America Radio Show on Facebook. Back after these messages, speaking of BizTalk Radio. It is Garden America, but you knew that. You know that. Your, your boys are with you. The fellas, the guys are back in town. Thank you for tuning in after our remote last week from Mission Hills Nursery. Good to be back in the studio. And again, as we discussed, we've got more live remotes on the way. Today, though, for the next uh, hour or so, we are talking about tomatoes, tomato mania. Anything on your mind concerning tomatoes or whatnot in the garden, let us know. Scott is our guest, Tiger. Yeah, so before the break, Scott was answering Elizabeth's question about um, an older tomato sprouting inside of another tomato. And, you know, as you mentioned, Scott, that is pretty interesting. But also, I mean, I have tomato seeds that sprout up in the darndest places, whether they're the <laughs> they cracks do. of my sidewalk or... How about behind your ear? All see that. Isn't that great? That shows, shows you how tough those guys are. Exactly. So, like you said, you know, the ground is a pretty weird place for tomatoes to start. So it, it makes perfect sense that it would just try to start within the tomato itself it has everything it needs right there <laughs> hey we have a couple questions from idaho oh, sure or scott yeah hello uh, idaho <laughs> um rick is asking if the tomatoes from brad gates and i think that you because of the shape of it and the flavor that might be a uh, a good conclusion to come to but it's actually from a a p whaley company so you could uh, look up Google A P Whaley and Whaley is W H A L E Y. Uh, his parents were the founders of Seed Savers Exchange. Yeah, I know the name. We've talked about it before, John. Yeah, and that's so e that's exactly right. And he's also asking um, if you have a growing grounds where you try all your new varieties. You mentioned that you were, you know, took some of these around last year. So yeah, I guess he's curious. Well, of course we have growing grounds, and that that's why. That's why we got this great, you know, why we're so excited about this guy, because we, we grew it in three. I have three set, three areas that I grow in during the summers. One's in Ojai, where I live. So we have a, we have a, small, a small test garden there. Then I have a flower farmer in, and a good friend of Tomato Mania, uh, Mark D'Onofrio's starter farm in San Inez, California. He's got a flower farm out there. But he reserves, he reserves space in his fields for, for our tomatoes. And then I have a, a, a good friend on, a, on an avocado and lemon ranch in Camarillo who does the same. So I have three areas. We grow two to three hundred plants per, um, upwards of seventy-five varieties. We don't grow. I don't grow long rows of anything because I want to dry everything, right? And so I do two of this, one of those, three of those, and we sort of, um, you know, we sort of walk through that during the summer and and have a ball. And the, the fun thing is we get to, you know, we get to pick a winner, but they're all mostly. Uh, it's hard because there, there's a lot of good stuff we find each summer. So that's our process. It's hardly scientific. But we get out there and we just find out what we love, and that's I, can, I guess what tomato is, tomato mania is about anyway. We yeah. love it; it's fun. We, we <laughs> do this because this is a great thing to do, and, and and our test gardens are the same. And and I will say for anybody that might be thinking about going to one of Scott's events um, for Tomato Mania, it definitely comes across as this is his passion. The people that he surrounds himself with that are helping sell the tomatoes, give people insight on what the tomatoes are, find a tomato for them. They all are enjoying it. They're all having a good time out there. And so it's a great chance to go to a, a nursery or, you know, you, you host these at different um, locations that, you know, if you're looking for great information and some really neat varieties that are going to match with what you're looking for, definitely want to attend in person. And, and then we have another question, Scott, that you might be able to answer this one. Um, sure, let's try. Is that the one from India? Yes. I mean, I think so. Oh, my so. goodness. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. We are worldwide, is, Scott. I, guys, I'm impressed. Is there any species like pumpkin tomato? 
It's shaped like pumpkins, but the size of normal tomatoes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, you know these in the in the in the tomato world, we call those lobes, and lobes. that's what you see in a pumpkin. That pumpkin shape is very often tied to some of the oldest and most revered of the heirloom tomatoes. Off the off the top of my head, I'm thinking of Italian ones like Pantano Romanesco is is Romanesco is one. The the um, Castelluto Genovese is another. These are flattened lobes. So for all intents and purposes, they look like a pumpkin. And, and very irregular, normally red. Um, we're starting to see some lobes close now, and that's very exciting. But absolutely, there there are tomatoes or tomatoes that look like pumpkins, and uh, uh, they don't taste the same, obviously. But boy, they're exciting in the garden. And isn't um what is it? Is Radiator Charlie's is that a lobed one also? It or? is. It is one that can lobe. We okay. don't always see that. Normally right, not. You, right. No, you're right, Tiger. You, you though, that is one that it's not as it's not as intensely sort of shaped as might as might the Italians might be. Um, and then there are others as well. But um, but yes, you are you are correct. That one yeah. can definitely love. Yeah, and that's the the wonderful thing about the Tomato Mini event is that you what did you guys say? Two hundred and fifty varieties. You're gonna you're gonna find big or small, orange or red, well, yellow, exactly, green. <laughs> you're gonna find all of it. And yeah. and uh, and obviously we can't have we, we don't, obviously I don't have space to put two hundred and fifty varieties in some of my sales. We wish we could do it every every time. Mm -hmm. But no matter where we go, we have a the width and the breadth of the variety is what we're after. So whether it's 75 varieties, because not many people, I mean, some people at Rogers have, but uh, not many people plant 75 varieties. So if I, <laughs> if I provide 75, I'm doing pretty well, and we can yeah. still offer you a great variety. And, and, Tiger, thanks for the comments about the sales, because you know what? We do have fun, and I do have great people around me, and that is, is a huge part of what we do. Yeah. You know, we uh, Elizabeth in Ventura County wants to know uh, where she can get your tomatoes nearby. Do you sell at any of the farmers markets? Well, I don't, and and the the, the main reason for that is we don't fit. We mm -hmm. just we just can't fit in the spaces that are normally you know reserved for farmers markets. And because we bring a lot, it's nothing I can load in on a Sunday morning and sell for three hours, you know, sell for that short term and then go. Right. In Ventura County, we're and 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 in Byron's, we're all over. Um, tomatomania.com, our website, will run you down through the schedule. But uh, we're in Fillmore at Otto and Sons Roses. We're on a rose, uh, a beautiful rose nursery, um, mid March. We'll be in Ojai uh, at a at a at a feed store that I love. We'll be at Seaside Nursery in Carpinteria. We'll be at Underwood Family Farms, this amazing farm stand, and uh, at the tra it's a garden a garden and farm attraction in uh, in Moore Park. And we'll also be at their farm market in Selma. So wow. I hope you, if you're in Ventura County, you got a lot of shots, and we'll hope to see you. Yeah. Wow. And I, and I will say, um, you know, also for the people that are listening and trying to get to one of Scott's events, you, you do stagger and, you know, just like everything when it comes to growing, you know, you're going to have some tomatoes sometimes, and you might not have other ones, but you always have Absolutely. you always have different ones to be able to change it up, But and you're always trying to work on the cycle to be consistent, but, you know, if you miss it at Carpinteria, you can maybe get it at Moore Park or something like that. There right? you go. And a lot of these places, Tiger, will also do. Again, COVID has taught us that we we can and like to be in a spot for a longer time, so that we can actually be there for people. And so we will have some extended sales. Uh, in fact, all the ones I just mentioned will have some version of an after sale, where where, where we will we will uh, continue to insert really great you know, varieties into their selection over a period of weeks. So we're really excited. And hey, we're going to rely on John to make sure we're keeping up on the questions, John. Yeah, I've got another one yeah. here from Thank Carla. You, Thank you, John. Yeah, Carla in Huntington Beach uh, needs more land. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. Yeah, so she wants to know if you can uh, give her an idea on some good determinate varieties or shorter growing varieties that could easily be grown in pots. That aren't going to well, take up too much room. She's along the coast, so. right? Oh, and, and and she's along the coast. So yeah. So those are two things we kind of need to talk to, right, Tiger? Like you guys down in San Diego. Um, first of all, please grow tomatoes in pots, everybody. Um, you know, this is. I, I have people that apologize. They apologize to us when they. Oh, we have to grow in pots. It's a terrific way to grow tomatoes. Just get your soil right. Start with a great potting soil, and then enrich it and amend it, just like you do the ground. Um, it's a terrific way to you know to do things. Um, in terms of determinants that um, that will work in a pot, you know, again, we we're t we talk a lot about heirlooms. Most of those show an indeterminate or in in the indeterminate class, and are you know can get pretty big. A lot of the determinants will be Roma styles because that's what you know. They're, de they're determinants. Everybody is designed to produce a little more at once, like if you're going to make a sauce. So that makes sense for Romas, right? So there are there are determinants that are 
that are shorter that a lot of the new ones even even celebrity i think and forgive me i'd have to go check that but but there are some modern hybrids that are um that are determined so they'll be a little bit smaller and a little bit more manageable but what i'm getting to here is there's a whole new class that container growers need to be aware of and this is that these are the dwarf heirlooms mm. very big deal for us now and we got a lot of people who are really happy with them they are sturdy little indeterminate that seldom get over three feet tall. Wow! So they are perfect in Huntington Beach in a in a in a container if the container is large enough, and um, will will be great. They're sturdy, they're fruitful because they're heirlooms. We we're now able to offer all the stripes and lobes and sizes and colors in a more com- compact plant. Um, there are a, a group of hybridizers from all over the world that have been sharing genetics for the last 15 years, and they've created hundreds of these varieties. So please look for those. We will showcase only the beginning of this at our events this year, but we'll get into that more as we go, as we go along. And for the beach, just while we're on it, guys, too, the things that we talk about at, at our events, and we're hey, doing... Hey, Scott, sorry I cut you off. We'll have to take another break, but when we get back, we'll continue talking with Scott Daig with Tomato Mania. Yeah, Scott, hold that uh, train of thought there as we continue, and uh, John is keeping track of all the questions which keep on coming in. Keep those questions coming. Got a good pace to the show talking tomatoes this morning with Scott Digg. And again, going to take a break. Those on the Biz Talk Radio and Facebook Live. Stay with us as uh, more Tomato Talk next on Garden America. We are back uh, broadcasting live. Uh, those on Facebook, uh, Biz Talk Radio, pre-recorded show from last week, but everything else remains the same. That being, this is uh, the final segment of our number one on Biz Talk Radio. News coming up top of the hour. We're back at six minutes after. Hopefully your market carries both hours, if not at least one or uh, two of our hours here on uh, Garden America. Back with Scott Degg talking tomatoes, tomato mania here on Facebook Live. Tiger? Yeah, before the break, Scott, you were talking about how Carla, I think it was, is growing her tomatoes along the coast. And depending on where you put it also might depend on the variety you might want to grow, right? And, and, and we were talking about the fact that most heirlooms, which is what, we're, what so many are after and what we, what we really highlight most at our sales, then really are indeterminate. So there's a whole new class of dwarfs that are definitely indeterminate, but shorter and stouter and made for a pot. You might, I mean, you might need one little pole, right, to hold them up because they'll be covered with fruit. Let me tell you that. <laughs> and, and so they'll be heavy, but they really, really work. And I encourage everybody to start looking for that class because growers are getting into it. It's starting to make a difference. And the product, the end product, is so wonderful because now you can get all these, all these great heirlooms. And we were talking about hunting, hunting them beach guys and, and finding determinates at uh, well, any, any class of tomato at the beach, you know, can be a little challenging or finding or getting a good harvest at the beach can be, can be tough. Uh, but here at Rogers, where we deal with so much of Newport and even down the Laguna and all, all the rest, here's what we tell people. If you're on the beach, choose a tomato that is smaller than a baseball and under 72 days. Ah. That's, that's our guideline. Okay. Uh, the 72 days is about days to maturity. You're, you're choosing a short season tomato that will flower and fruit in cooler or more temperate situations. You know, everybody wants to go grab the big fat heirloom and all that <laughs> fills your hand at the yeah. end of the season. But at the beach, you have, you have trouble with like consistent heat that it takes to, to push that, to make that happen. So yeah. buy that one at the farmer's market, but outside your kitchen door, once you're growing smaller stuff, it's early. And as we, as we mentioned before, I think, it'll produce at the beginning of the season, through the summer, and then should be happy at the, in the fall and, and the late season as well. Yeah. You know, one Great of those... Hand. Oh, I'm sorry, Tiger. One of those super dwarf tomatoes that uh, Scott is talking about that has tested really well at the beach is a variety called Iditarod. Oh, yeah. So that might be one if you can find Carla to uh, give it a chance. That's such a great idea. And look, I don't know that one, guys. I love that. So guess what I'm doing when I hang out, right? (laughs) I'm going to go find that one. There are hundreds now. I'll bring you one next week, Scott. We We grew one last year called Saucy Mary just laid us the plant isn't even a foot and a half tall i harvested 30 tomatoes off one plant and they're green with yellow stripes it's amazing oh i like the name saucy mary great name for a tomato hey hey scott we have a question um one of our listeners is here in san diego and next weekend you guys will be joining our tomato mania will be joining us at mission hills nursery 
Very he's, excited he, about he's that. He's going to be looking for the variety mortgage lifter. Do you know if that's going to be one on your list or one that? Well, maybe... you know what? If it if it isn't Tiger, now that I know, I can find it. I'll <laughs> review the list and we'll see what happens. Normally, you know, the mortgage lifter is one of those ones uh, among fifty classics that we yeah. sort of swap in and out of sales, mm-hmm. uh, just just so that we can have some variety. But I, I'll take a look and I'll do my best to get it down there. How's that? Perfect. All right. Yeah. And I All mean, right. yeah. And if we can't, if he, Scott can't find it, maybe we can get it at Mission. Oaks I'm Nursery thinking. Sure. I'm thinking you have a supplier or two that's a, a savvy yeah. supplier or two that can help you out with that one as well. Yeah. We can't wait to be in San Diego. This is our first full strength sale in probably three years. Yeah. So we're we're really excited and look forward to being down there. Hey, Lenore in uh, Canyon Country has a practical question here. <laughs> She wants to know if she needs to change the container soil if she grew tomatoes there last year, or does she just need to amend it? That sounds like when you plant them in the ground, right? I I think that's kind of what she's wondering, or wondering if all the nutrients have been used up. But, but, you know, it's expensive to change pots every year. What do you think, Scott? What's your assessment? In a container, guys, and Lenore, I would love to tell you that that's okay, but I'm the laziest gardener in the world. I'm really enthusiastic, but I'm kind of lazy, and I'm telling you, when I don't change out pots, or, or, I'll, or I'll have a, a slew, you know, a set of four pots, and I won't change two, and I, I'll change, uh, I, I'll, I'll change two, and I won't change two. Guess which ones do the best? <laughs> it is, it, it is imperative to, to, as you point out, I think, John, you, you got to return some nutrients, uh, some nutrient value there. Right. You really do. It's gone, and especially if you had disease problems in the previous year, right? And you don't want any of that hanging out. Um, it, it is an investment. Um, use that soil somewhere else in the garden. But absolutely re-up every, you know, if you, if you got the budget and the energy, do it. If you, if you got to go halfway, do half of it, right? Um, and, and remember in your pots, uh, don't forget the compost and, again, all those things you put in the ground. A really good, a really good flangy mix and an overlay with compost. And, uh, again, at the very minimum, uh, and I understand, I get it, and, and I have people who have 50 pots and they're not about to change that every year, <laughs> right? Um, but if, if get, the, get, the, get as much as you can done in terms of, of, of changing it out. And then, too, Lenore, you're going to have to, knowing that you, if you haven't changed them, right, guys, um, you're going to have to be uh, on top of, on top of the fertilizer as you go through the season. You've got to you've got to you've got to replace what you didn't put back in there in soil. So yes, top of the, do it if you do it if you can. I think it's best. Um, and then if you can't, make amends for that. Make make you know do yeah. what you can as a farmer to make that go. And I mean, when it comes to growing plants, you know, as we as we know, we. It's tough because, you know, as people say, oh, well, now that's X amount of potting soil I have to buy. You know, I have to go buy yep. these bags of potting soil, and that could get pretty pricey. But the, on the other side, if you don't do it, you can spend, you know, like you mentioned, Scott, right. 72 days on a short end of growing something, developing something, and then have it just not do well or fail or not produce. It's true. And it's, you're what's, so, what's you're more, so right. And guys, what's look, more better? Is, you know, it might, you might have a few tomatoes, but who wants that? Yeah. I mean, you want a lot of tomatoes. Yeah. And you might have smaller tomatoes, and who wants that? We want to get what we saw in that picture when we chose <laughs> it, right? <laughs> yeah, and so yeah. you need to be, you need to be opter- oper- operating at a, mul- at a, you know, at the top level. And yeah. that's important. Yeah. You know, and again, yeah. containers, yeah. tomatoes love containers. So <laughs> it's, uh, so give them what they need. I told somebody yesterday at Rogers, I said, hey, what does it cost you to go to a movie, buy popcorn, and have a couple drinks, a couple, co- you know, Coca Colas, right? Yes. Uh, about the same as it will for a, a bag of compost and a couple bags of potting soil. <laughs> so get out there and change your pots <laughs> up, and you'll be happier at the end of the season. Definitely. Oh gosh, Scott, so much good information, so many varieties. Thank you. Um, hey, we're gonna go ahead and let you get going because we know you got to get back to your event. Um, you're up at Rogers Garden. I posted the link to mediamania.com to our uh, Facebook feed, and we'll share Thank it online so as much. well for more information. And we, I will see you next weekend down in San Diego. Can't wait. Looking forward to it, guys. Always love to talk to you. Thanks for what you do out there, and uh, and uh, keep it up. All right. Take Thank care, you, man. Scott. Okay, obviously uh, very popular with our Facebook uh, viewers, listeners, and uh, those on BizTalk Radio. Hopefully you got a lot, of, a lot out of that as well. And a lot of good questions, too. If we didn't get to a, a question or two, we can certainly answer that ourselves, do yeah. our best. I have a question for John when we get back from break. Okay, that said, uh, those on BizTalk Radio, news coming up top of the hour. We come back at six minutes after, and again, hopefully you've got both hours, if not at least one or the other. And on Facebook uh, Live, uh, those tuned in, keep tuning in. And uh, questions, yes. We're going to take a news break for BizTalk Radio. Going to be back much quicker here on Facebook Live. I'm Brian Main, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox. Stay with us here on Garden America.
All righty, those on uh, Biz Talk Radio, six minutes after the hour, we say good afternoon to you, pre-recorded show. And uh, those of us here on uh, Facebook Live, we are back doing it again. I don't need my headsets. Do I, Tiger? Oh, Do I, Joe? You guys beat me to the punch. All right, so we are back for uh, what will be our number two on Biz Talk Radio, Facebook Live. We just keep on floating right along. And, John, did we answer most, if not all, questions? Most of them. Rick in uh, Idaho wants to know if Scott has any grafted tomatoes, and I don't think he does this yeah. year. Uh, but, um, Rick, but, if you message me on Facebook, um, I will send you a list of ones that I will be shipping. Because since okay. you're in Idaho, you're probably going to have to get them shipped anyways. Right. Um, and I'll let you know. I think um, I have Thorn Barons, Terracotta, Big Beef. What was the other ones that were grafted, the standard, that was part of that little package? Do you remember? We did like three tomatoes. One was Big Beef, maybe Saucy Lady was a grafted one. Do you remember? I re We used to graft Saucy Lady. Right. Saucy Lady, and then yeah. I think there was a small, like a cherry one or something like that. But I'll, okay. I'll look, Rick, and I'll let you know which ones we have grafted. Well, in. Thornburn's terracotta grafted would be awesome. It is awesome. Yeah, I had one last year in my yard. Loved it. Did we mention in honor of today's show that John's got his uh, Mighty Mato shirt on? Yeah. That he I modeled know, huh? for us if before we went on the air? <laughs> zoom in on John right there. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I have a question, though, for John and what he thinks about this because. Um, well, you can email him, John at <laughs> GardenAmerica.com. Was it Lenore who asked about the soil? Right. right. Now, you know those compost bins those big square ones mm -hmm. okay now if you had your old potted mix dumped them all in there kind of mixed them up maybe threw a bit of biosol in it mm -hmm. left it for a season and then the next season kind of took that out and then could you you think reuse that for a potting soil like gave it a rest for a season added the nutrient because the perlite or pumice and is all still good it's in there. still there right right and i mean it might be a little broken down more than when you but if you fluffed it up maybe with a little bit more uh well if something. you're adding green material and the bacteria are breaking it down and turning it into compost yeah it would be good yeah if it was me it de it depends on how much land you have yeah yeah but i would take the soil from my pots and i would just you know work it into the ground yeah i mean that is great as well yeah it's super good i do that too and that is super good because that makes it a lot easier to plant in areas in the future oh but I but yeah if you wanted to reuse it recycle the soil you can do that i just i'm sorry but i love rick you know hey where are the garden america t-shirts <laughs> You know, I wish we had a T-shirt sponsor. That'd be great if somebody listening or watching yeah. did T-shirts. So we clean. we did remember when we were Garden Life years ago. We yeah. had Garden Life T-shirts, but we also had golf shirts too, polo shirts as well that we had. That was it, Garden Compass. Wow, so many gar no, different so many garden, garden variations. <laughs> and now we're Garden America. Yeah, and we should have like the big screaming eagle coming in, <laughs> you know, with the <laughs> with a hoe, you know, in the in his talons, you know, instead of arrows. Yeah, yeah. and descending on a garden. <laughs> And red, white, and, and red, white, and, and blue. And instead of uh, olive branches, like roses, yeah, carrying roses. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, somebody get on that. I'm sure somebody listening or watching that, wants that's to an design artist, a T-shirt that, that can sketch something for Daniel's us. Daniel's already got it done right now. He's listening and then all right, like, Daniel. Oh, I got it. That's you, Daniel, our IT guy. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that said, I think we are caught up on um, you have a logo, Elizabeth wants to know. Yes, we do have a logo. Yes, it's right there on the page. Yeah, it's our little <laughs> if flower. If you're looking, it says, on the ask right -hand your side of your page. questions. Yeah. What, 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 what kind of flower is that? Do you even know? Or is it's it just a, a stylized a, drawing. A symbolized <laughs> right. flower. But we are a growing experience, right, guys? <laughs> we are. We are. So, yeah, the logo's right there, top right-hand side of your page. And you, you, in the past, would end every show with get growing. America. America, which came from you, which I, I forget, which maybe we should get back to that. Also, if you want to see another uh, look at our logo, on the left-hand side of our uh, page here on the screen, bottom left, where it says ask your garden questions right. in the chat and get l answers live. We're not going to record our answers. No. We're going to give you those answers live. Right now. Exactly. Um, you look know, at Daniel. I heard that. <laughs> 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 Way to go, Daniel. Thank you, buddy. Uh, I wanted to mention that... Uh, I usually put uh, three pictures in our newsletter every yep. year from what you've sent us in your garden. Yes. And when you do send those pictures to John at GardenAmerica.com, please put in where you are from. Right. Even if I've known you for, 
yeah. 10, 20 years. Let us yeah. know where you're from. I'm, I'm at the age where, you know, I'm not sure where I live anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so just put, you know, Car, yeah. uh, Carla from Huntington Beach. I was thinking the same thing as an Le example. Lenore from Canyon Country. Right, yeah. Carolyn from uh, Newport Beach or Costa Mesa. Or oh, Veronica from Spring Valley. Veronica's from Spring Valley. There you go. Yeah, perfect. T-shirt sounds interesting. See, you know what? We we could get a little thing going here, pick yeah. up a few bucks here and there, there we sell go. some T-shirts. <laughs> Daniel, let's have a meeting, or maybe you just take care of it. <laughs> just, just do it. You know what we want, Daniel. Yeah. Rick asks the question or is making the statement that tomatoes are heavy feeders, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 Heavy feeders and, you know, I mean, we're, we're talking about pots, so watering has got to be on top of it, too. Oh. Speaking of which, I wanted to mention, I have a friend um, who is a farmer in the Central Valley, and he had a post this week. We were talking about just tomatoes and the heavy feeders that made me think of this was he grows almonds. And as we all know, we've had some wonky weather. And, mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking you know hundreds and hundreds of acres of almonds. And he wanted to bring attention to farmers and what they go through on an, an, on an annual basis. And he had a picture of a of a good viable almond flower with a almond nut starting in mm -hmm. it. And then he had right next, we had another flower of a almond that had died because of the frost. Oh. So all on one tree, you have these flowers with successful, you know, germination or I mean, what would that be called? You know, nut creation. <laughs> and then, and then one nut that, creation. Nut you, creation. you know, not, not successful. And it, and there was nothing they did wrong. It was pure weather. And, you know, to the tomatoes, talking about feeding and watering and things. Um, you know, I know one thing that happens is when they get up to a size, people begin to forget the feeding. You know, they feed them in the beginning and they get going, but then they start to turn yellow and they're watering more and they can't figure out what's wrong and because they forgot the the additional feeding right. that they need. So, you know, you know, it's interesting. Even though we have you know year-round weather here to garden. During this time of the year, for the most part in my patio and, and whatnot, you, you, you keep an eye on things, but not as much attention as you would in the dead of summer, the heat. And with all this tomato talk now and stuff and the weather getting to look pretty good, I'm thinking, you know, let me get out there, maybe sweep up a little bit and, and yeah, check to see what, needs, what may need some feeding, what may need some fertilizer, because, heck, guys, it's going to be March next week, right? Yeah. It sneaks up on you. It does. So, yeah, so get back out there and start to paying more attention. Like you said, you tend to forget about it. Yeah. yeah. After a while. And, you know, the people on the East Coast, you still have oh. two months yeah, exactly. of preparation. So they, they get the lead time because right. they hear about us talking about it all the time. And, and you know what? The and they're ready for it. We're, we're surprised. And we're the shocked. calendar for them means so much more. They're looking <laughs> at that date, be it April, be it May. Yeah. And we go outside and, yeah, it's kind of sunny today. Maybe I should start doing something. Yeah. Right. You know, if you're not in San Diego, uh, but another zip code, you can Google – just Google last frost date, and you'll come up with different sites where you can just put in your zip code, and it'll tell you the last fro yeah. frost date for your zip code, which is important to know. <laughs> yeah, and that's based off of hundreds of years of almanac and records. That it's, right. it's a good measurement. I was going to say, sure. how much would the farmer's almanac help? In that situation, <laughs> I would say not at all. Not at all. You're not a big farmer's almanac. You're not a big yeah, Benjamin Franklin guy, are you? <laughs> almanac guy. No, yeah. never been. Excited about the farmer's almanac. The How moon, can they get credit for The moon for it? cycle and yeah. Oh, you know, my the grandmother tide, tide thing? always yeah. used to plant by the moon. You always. Did? Your grandmother did it? always. Yeah. By the by the light of the silvery moon. No, it had to do yeah. with the phases of the moon. Yeah. different things like quarter that. moon, half moon. There's a lot of gardeners that still. Focus they may on be that. right too. I don't I honestly have never that. looked into it. Yeah. Um, that whole. Tide thing, full moon, tides coming up, tides going out. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people rely on that, too, John. <laughs> the tide, they rely on You've tide. You've been more of an ivory snow guy rather yeah. than tide. For the, mo for the most part. Right. <laughs> um, I see a break coming up here, not right now, but <laughs> maybe well, a, Ly Lyla a few Lyla in Poway wants to know how often she should feed her tomatoes. Uh, Depends what kind of food you're using, yeah. for yeah. one. If they're in containers and you're using Osmocote, you know, once or twice a season is going to be fine. Yeah. Uh, if they're in the ground and you're using organic foods, you don't need to fertilize as often, but I would say every six weeks. Yeah, once a month every six weeks. And yeah. if you're using water-soluble foods, uh, even if you're using a water-soluble organic like, like fish emulsion or uh, liquid kelp, 
that it needs to be every two weeks. John yeah. brought us right up to the break. Boy, his timing is impeccable. He's been doing this a while. Yeah, he has. We're going to take a break here on BizTalk Radio, Facebook Live. Uh, Facebook Live, keep those questions coming, be it tomato questions or whatever here on Garden America. We have returned from a very short uh, Facebook Live break, a bit longer on uh, BizTalk Radio. But again, we want to thank those who uh, listen on BizTalk Radio, support the many sponsors of Garden America, and uh, for that matter, uh, the good folks at the network, BizTalk Radio. And a thanks to um, Stephanie, who is our new contact at the network, who makes sure that we get on the air each and every week. You know, I wanted to uh, mention a couple websites for people to get more tomato information. And one, if you go to our good friend Alice at Loghouse Plants, uh, there, you can't buy from them because they're a wholesale grower, but their website has got all kinds of great information on tomatoes. So if you go to loghouseplants.com, uh, you can find all kinds of great information. And the information comes from them physically growing the plants in their gardens. Uh, they do have test gardens where they mm -hmm. check the newest things. And Alice is involved with a lot of um, uh culinary uh, organizations where they, you know, make gourmet foods and uh, use gourmet vegetables and things in their recipes. Uh, so that's a good place to go. Uh, Tomato Mania yeah. is a, another one, tomatomania.com. And uh, for seeds, Tomato Fest up in the Bay Area oh. has got a lot one. of good information. I was going to say Baker Creek. You know, Baker Creek also, yeah. They're tomato selection and the information right. they put for each plant and that's a way to buy seeds right also has you know they they again they grow their own stuff so they have real life information right. about how their plants did um on their farm in their uh, petaluma is that where their farm is or just their they have a seed shop in petaluma okay but yeah they're yeah, yeah. yeah there's right. also um uh we mentioned a a p whaley yep uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I mentioned that he was the son of the founders of Seed Savers Exchange, but Seed Savers Exchange is also another good site for Tiger, information. Uh, Carl's got a question for you. Did you see that there? No, I did not. Do you want to ask? You mentioned pruning your tomatoes at one time. Can you prune down an indeterminate and have it grow and produce again? Um, so can you prune it down again? So this is a, like, does it sound like it's a second year indeterminate? It sounds like have it grow and produce again. Yes, I, okay. I, 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 I'm guessing. Um, hmm. I mean, that's it's tough for me to answer because I've got varieties. I've got tomato plants in my yard that have been there multiple seasons, and I have pruned them. And I would say sometimes I'm successful in having it grow back, and other times I'm not. That I don't know why I wouldn't be in. Depends why on the be. variety. Some yeah. varieties like Pequino are are great coming uh, up year to year, but it's always better to start with a new plant, yeah. a new fresh plant. Yeah, because yeah, I was gonna say there's definitely been times where I have pruned it and then the plant's just dead and doesn't come back. Yeah, and it's hard to sometimes know when that original plant came back and when it was a new one, right. but you just didn't realize yeah, it was exactly. a new one. Yeah, pruning so. is mainly for production during the growing season. You're mm -hmm. pulling off suckers and things like that. Uh, Dale wants to know the advantage of trench planting tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And tomatoes, unlike other plants, you know, if you bury other plants too deep, they can rot. Right. But if you bury a tomato deep, all along the stem you'll have roots forming. Yeah. So the deeper, uh, uh, now we're not talking grafted tomatoes because right. you can't, you don't want to bury grafted tomatoes too deep or you lose the advantage you have to keep of the, the graft line just above the soil right exactly but any other tomato if you plant it deeper you'll get a larger root system and the bigger the root system the more production you're going to get off your tomato so that's the reason for that dale yeah and, um again with the putting it in pots what is it they recommend taking off like one to two leaves and actually bearing it to the point you know of covering those leaf nodes as well 
Now, you know, some people bottom. will take a tomato and only leave one or two leaves above Out of the, the top. soil. <laughs> Yeah, because again, it's just going to root all along that area. So it just depends on the size tomato you're and, putting in. And with when you do that, understand that you do give a little bit of time to kind of development. So when I've done that in the past, the plant takes a little longer to produce because you change right. it. But that stem, you know, when Scott was talking about the dwarf varieties holding fruit and all of that, that stem, when you do bury the tomato a little deeper, just becomes a lot better to hold the plant up. Mm. And if you're talking about any kind of medium-sized fruit, it's an important thing to have that strength in the stem and then the branches as well. I would say a general rule of thumb would be to pull off the bottom leaves on the tomato and plant one-third all the way up to one-half of the tomato yeah. uh, below ground. Yeah. And, and you're right. Fun. Carla said second year on her tomato question. Yeah, so yeah, yeah I'd, I'd you know agree with John. Just start with a new one; it's tough. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna uh, give my tomato plants a lot of attention when I get home. Yeah. Just all this conversation is like kind of yeah. I better do this. I better feed. I you better need fertilize. new tomatoes. What's that? You need some new tomatoes. Yeah. Well, I always need new tomatoes. Uh, Rick says that uh, indeterminate indeterminate tomatoes keep growing, so you have to keep feeding them all season, right? Of course. Yeah. Uh, the same thing for indeterminate tomatoes as long as they're producing. The one thing mistake people make on tomatoes, I believe, is overwatering. Uh, the tomatoes really mm. should only be watered just before they get to the wilting point. If you're trying to figure out the year you live, how often the tomatoes should be watered, what I would do would be to water them really good and then wait to see how long it takes before they start to wilt. Yep. And then I would take that time, like say it took three days before they started to wilt. Well, at two and a half days, I would water them next time. So you don't let them wilt. But yeah. you, the tomato itself will uh, have a lot more flavor. Yeah, that's right. They do get watered down if you do water them too much. Um, so, you know, you kind of deplete the plant of some of the good sure. flavors. Like the sugars and stuff, right? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Carla says she has a Gurney's catalog, Gurney's Ooh. seed catalog, and it has Mighty Tomatoes in it. Oh. Uh, for people who are looking for grafted tomatoes, as we mentioned, uh, Tiger has a few. You can uh, instant message him on Facebook. Yeah. Um, you can also, is uh, I don't know if Gurney ships to California, but if they do, that's a possibility. Territorial Seed Company uh, up in Oregon has a few varieties and then um where are the people you're growing gardener for? supply gardener supply yeah has a few so check out those sources and elizabeth with a question john elizabeth wants to know the difference between indeterminate and termin determinant she says terminate but it's determinate determinant. right right that's a good question yeah because we talk about that all the time and but people just, not everybody always knows yeah okay there's also determinant and determinant. <laughs> right. Oh, goodness. But a lot of people think they should know something. Yeah, I, I should yeah. know that. I'm right. not going to ask that question. Yeah. An indeterminate tomato is a vining tomato that just keeps growing and producing all season right. long. Yeah. Determinant tomatoes grow to a certain height, produce all their tomatoes at one time, and then they're dead. They're done. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And those are usually what are grown commercially. And you know why, Brian? Um, you know what? For a few theories come to mind. For harvesting. But, yeah. you know, you're going to send in yeah. a crew to pick the tomatoes. When you, you can't pick them. You can't send them in every day, yeah. right? Right. So you want the crop to be ripe all at once. They go in, harvest it, and then go on to something else. And they've easier. been doing it for so long that they can plan it where right. they say, hey, in four weeks, we need this many people to pick right. all these Right, tomatoes. because we have a timeline. We know yeah. at this point in time we're going to need to do that. Yeah. Now, determinant indeterminant tomatoes. Uh, or indeterminate determinants, okay. <laughs> however you want to say it, are um, the dwarf type tomatoes like the uh, the super dwarf class. I, I got to interrupt you because we're a little late. Well, what about after the break? My fault. We're running late. After right. the break, stay with John with a lot more information here on Garden America. We 
We are back, and as Tiger and I continue to stare at John, uh, <laughs> keep those questions coming here on uh, Garden America. Thank you so much for tuning in, Biz Talk Radio, and those on Facebook Live. Back to John. We had to interrupt John with his uh, train of thought. John? Yeah, just prior to the break, we were talking about the new super dwarf type tomatoes. And those are tomatoes that grow like determinant. They only get to be a certain height, but they continue to produce. Yeah. So you don't have the one crop, and then that's it. You'll get them all season long. So Yeah, and those ones are, like Scott was mentioning, the really nice ones for containers. Right. People keep them close to Even their home. Even in the ground. To be able to, yeah, you know, but people keep them close to their home so they can just go out there and pick one or two right. tomatoes when they need it. Yeah. And the plant always, always It's has always something. there. It's always available. Yes, exactly. So it's I remember a good our new variety. Test fields in Bonzel. Mm -hmm. We had a bunch of tomatoes planted, probably, I'm guessing, 50 varieties. And we had someone come out to look at the tomatoes. And uh, I think it was from Ball Seed Company, if I'm not mistaken. And he was walking down. Uh, the rows, looking at the tomatoes, and he came, this was, a, was the first year we planted uh, one of the super dwarf types, and I believe this variety was Tasmanian chocolate. Mm -hmm. And he got to that area where the row of Tasmanian chocolates wa uh, was, and he went, wow. And he had never seen anything like that before. They were, um, uh, we were talking about Alice earlier, and Alice like to call them little sumo wrestlers because <laughs> they were stocky, stocky yeah, plant. tomatoes that didn't need a cage, really. Or if you do have a tomato cage, one of the few tomatoes that actually could grow in a tomato Maybe one cage. of those small tomato cages. Yeah, because yeah. the regular tomato cages holds it up to a certain <laughs> height and then the whole thing falls over. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the super dwarf tomatoes or the, um, uh, you can also Google dwarf tomato project. And Scott referenced this earlier, but it's a, an Internet project, really, of tomato growers from all over the world that have been shipping seeds to each other and growing these uh, uh, really sturdy dwarf-type tomatoes. And they've been able to do different styles, too. I mean, you mentioned Tasmanian chocolate, and that's you know obviously a, a brownish chocolate-colored one, mm -hmm. but it's a medium-sized fruit. And then they have ones that have like almost cherry, cherry like fruit on them. And, you know, they have, so it's not just small tomatoes that they're right. growing on these smaller plants. There's good sized tomatoes growing on a smaller plant. Well, all those tomatoes go back to uh, the breeding began with a tomato around 1918, 1920, somewhere in that time frame. And it was called New Big Dwarf. And the, that particular tomato used to get to be about two feet tall, two and a half feet tall, but produced two-pound tomatoes. Wow. So like you're saying, Tiger, you, just because the plant is small doesn't mean you can't have large fruit. Right. But the problem with New Big Dwarf was the flavor wasn't really that <laughs> great. But since then, you yeah. know, in the next 100 years, they've been able. They've to they've done a lot of breeding, yeah, especially yeah. with this new dwarf tomato project. And there's a lot of great varieties out there. Good for containers. Perfect for containers. Yeah. Well, yeah, more control in containers, no matter what you grow, for the most part. Well, and then even, I mean, something that's becoming more popular as well as people that are living in urban environments are growing these plants inside. Mm -hmm. And you know, I mean, you couldn't. You'd have to have one closet dedicated to one plant to be able to grow a tomato plant inside before with a grow light and everything. But, right. you know, these Tasmanian chocolate, what was the other one? Is it the Super Dwarf? I did, did, I did, I did a rod, I, like the I did a rod race. Yeah, so exactly. I did a rod. Yeah. You know, these plants Mush. easily a good size pot inside on a kitchen counter, you know, put a grow light over it. You can grow it inside really easily and get cool fruit and production right. off with, of the, with the proper growing conditions and the proper grow light. Yeah. yeah. The, um, I've had people ask me this before, and Tiger would never remember this because it didn't exist <laughs> uh, <laughs> after he was born. <laughs> but do you remember the old Sunday magazines? Um, like Parade? Like Parade magazine, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Before sure. it was two pages. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, before the Internet. Right. Parade Magazine would, in the spring, would always have on the back p 
page, the tree tomato. Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah, that, that is familiar. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know what I was looking at at the time, but. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and so people would, I've had people ask me through the years, um, you know, is there such a thing as a tree tomato? And the, what they were selling was a tree, but it wasn't a tomato. Yeah. It was the uh, tamarillo or tamarillo, depending on how you want to pronounce it, yeah, which is a, a tropical fruit tree. Right. And it will, it, I remember back in Michigan, people would always buy those because they wanted to have a tree <laughs> tomato. And right. then Nurseryman's Exchange, I think, might be the people who actually started that up in the Bay Area. And the problem was it took 18 months before it would start to fruit. <laughs> so, yeah, in so in Michigan, you would get, uh, you know, a nice tomato Two that was later. about eight feet tall. But, no, it wouldn't. It would freeze in the winter. Yeah. So you never got them. But if you do live in a warm climate or if you do want to grow it in a huge pot and bring it in in the winter, you can grow those, and they're easy to find. In the fruit tastes tomato-ish? kind of looks like a plum tomato but doesn't taste tomato I was going to say I don't remember it's them gimmicky. tasting very tomato-ish. Yeah. Siphomandra is the the genus and I have to tell you I, I don't know if I've ever had this with any other plant but it has big leaves and if I would rub the leaves and smell them uh -huh. I would have an instant headache. Really? Yeah instantly. Really? Yeah so I don't oh, know. You just said that didn't you? Yeah. Really? I mean really? But it's, but that's, 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 for that to soak in, it's what he weird, just said. you know. I mean, makes you wonder though too, because I mean, you know, tomatoes are a solanum, which right. are in the nightshade family, and we all know that there's poisonous varieties in that you know, genus there. So if this plant, I don't know if it was in a family of, maybe it had something in there, and you weren't supposed to be smelling it. I don't it. know. <laughs> I don't know. The tree itself gets to be like ten to eighteen feet tall. Oh my goodness. And they're really fast growing. Might be something you want to try. Yeah, the next at your time house, somebody says, "I'm looking for a fast growing tree that produces tomatoes." Tomatoes, it gets <laughs> to be no no higher than uh, ten or twelve feet. Yeah. Oh, there, one tomato I'm fascinated with is the I first saw it at, I think it was at the Heirloom Festival, and I'm trying to think of what it was called. And the reason I really liked it was because the flower was pretty, and it forms uh, a shrub, and oh. it's something that will last from year to year. It was a tomato, though? It is a tomato, and I think it's called, uh, I'll look it up. I think it's the lychee tomato, mm -hmm. which is a solanum, yeah. but uh, not, uh, let's see, the tomato is uh, solanum lycopersicum. I don't remember the second part of it. Uh, but anyway, the lychee tomato is I just see on here is available from Baker Creek Nursery and uh, they said it has a superb creamy to mild cherry flavor uh, but it, it has a really pretty flower and you know in a warm climate it it um, <laughs> produces a fruit and it says it used to be used as a condiment for cannibals oh. Wait, uh, in I Fiji, so it pairs well with uh, human with flesh. human flesh, exactly. Oh. Condiment for cannibals. <laughs> yeah. That's not like a name of a rock group. <laughs> that, that is a good name. Condiment for, a rock for cannibals. Group. Yeah, that this is Saturday. A, that is a good name Condiment for a rock for group. Condiment for cannibals. <laughs> <laughs> the one, the one thing you do want to watch out for is it does have thorns. Oh yeah. So, so be careful. Condiment for cannibals. Yeah. But if you want but, something uh, different. A lot of give it a try. So I wonder if it's more in the uh, potato family relation because a lot of potatoes have thorns. You know, a lot of those ones, right? Well, it is a solanum. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like that that variety that that variety of solanum right. they have thorns. That's kind of a normal thing. Right. Uh, in that group, so I wonder if it's more related to that side of it than the tomato plant, like you mentioned. What was the second part you mentioned? The like, whatever, the big long Latin word. Lycopersicum? Yeah, exactly. Lycopersicum. I feel like I, I feel like that's some kind of Greek god. Yeah, Lycopersicum. <laughs> like, Lycopersicum came down from. This is Solanum, Cisimbriafolium. Oh goodness. 
<laughs> this is We're going to take a break. If you spell it, I'll give you 100 bucks <laughs> no, right now. 100 bucks right now if you can spell it. <laughs> we're going to take a break. Uh, coming up next, our very last and final segment for this uh, Saturday here, Saturday afternoon, Saturday morning here on Garden America. So still time for your questions, your comments. For the most part, we've been talking about tomatoes, but uh, whatever's on your mind, let us know. I'm Brian Maine along with John Bagnesco, Tiger Fellow Fox. Going to take a break. One more segment coming up on your weekend here on Garden America. All right, those on BizTalk Radio, we are back. Uh, Facebook Live, we are back. This is our final segment. And again, we appreciate you tuning in, watching and listening every weekend. Thank you so much for supporting Garden America. And again, anybody out there with a T-shirt idea, Daniel, uh, let us know because I think that's what people want. Anyway, final segment, guys. Next week, we'll be talking with Justin West, and we're going to be talking about our, um, our uh, food supply chains but specifically avocados and those have been in the news lately but we'll be talking about you know how to grow your own avocado secure your own supply of avocados what the price of avocados in the news and you know definitely is one of those plants that growing your own will save you money you know there's there's not a lot out there that especially at the price they are now (laughs) that's what i'm saying it will a matter of fact if you have an avocado tree you could probably make money Right. right? <laughs> Watch out, but don't trip over that shallow root system. Yeah. <laughs> it depends, though. You know, my son does tree trimming, right? Uh-huh. And he just, uh, someone just asked him for a bid for removing 400 avocado trees. But that's because up there, aren't they getting money to take out the avocados as well? I have no idea. Yeah. It's like, I don't, I don't understand how, where we went wrong here, that they're taking out the avocados. It seems like such a lucrative deal. I, you know, I, I haven't looked this up, but uh, Gina says that right now Baker Creek is donating 100% of its sales uh, until the 28th yeah, I saw to that. Ukraine. I saw that. Yeah, so if you're looking for seeds, Baker Creek is a good spot to go right now. And they're, yeah. they're raising money. You see, Carla's got a question for you, Tiger. Oh. How do we find your email for the tomato list? Another great show today. Oh, okay. Um, Carla, I mean, you can just message me on Facebook, or I will post it. I will reply to her message right now with my email. There you go. Just like that, see? Instant gratification. That is our goal, John. Elizabeth wants to know if it's true that San Marzano tomatoes can only be grown in San Marzano. You know, San Marzano type tomatoes have been around for years, and there's different clones of it, um, and they they can be grown anywhere, but the Pacino, Pacino tomato is only supposed to be grown uh, in Sicily in one area. That could be what she's referring mm. to. Uh, uh, I don't know if San Marzano got the designation uh, for the area for their tomato, but we the best San Marzano tomato, and it's one we used to sell, was San Marzano Redorta which comes from the Redorta Mountain region in Italy. We're getting some kind of a beeping noise. I just saw that. All of a sudden here. Well, don't know exactly what it is, but I'm glad that it waited till uh, the end of the show for that to happen. Maybe it will go away. It's not Brian's phone. We know that. No, we know that. No, I'm, I'm very obvious. Oh, hmm. you know what I... What do you think? Low battery. Oh, is it but low battery? But it's almost the end of the show, so... Low good. battery, people. How about that? Yeah. So we just have a few minutes to go here. Nice. You don't wonder if in next year's budget we could just put new batteries in at the it's beginning the of tiger? each show. <laughs> I mean, is, <laughs> is there really a problem doing that? Uh, no. Didn't I save some batteries yeah. here for you? Yeah, I have some in my bag. But, but I mean, it lasts multiple shows. Right. But it just sometimes doesn't warn me before. Well, thank, thank you, guys. Yes, there is a beep, and that means low batteries. So, yeah. you know, hey, we're very transparent on this show. That means the end of the show is coming. Beware. Yeah. Be you ready. Know, get ready. <laughs> yeah. You know, we could make up some, you know, silly thing. But, no, it's just low batteries. That's all. <laughs> a little beeping sound here. So we have actually about uh, three minutes to go. If you can hang out. Uh, Ron, thank you for pointing that out, the beep. I just hang out during the beep here. Uh, we mentioned next week's show, or did we? Yeah, I mentioned Justin right. West. Justin, we'll be okay. talking avocados. And I was going to tell you I need a Nabal avocado. A, a, Can you get me eight one? eight ball? No, Nabal. Nabal? Yeah. No, N-A-B-A-L. N-A-B-A-L. Right. 
No. Naval or Naval. Is that new? Is that, is that a new one? Or? I think it's been around for just 100 years. Okay. So so it's one that's been around. What's so exciting about this avocado? Uh, you know how big reed avocados were? Yes. Or are about double the size of that. Oh, my goodness. And the same good flavor. So it's a big reed is, yeah. is, the, is yeah. the Nabal. I would also like a reed. Yeah? Oh, I can get a the reeds are easy. You know what? And oh, a Don Galagli. Okay. Can you give I, me one of those? Yeah. <laughs> no. No? No. no those, I, I have not ever seen that one. Really? Ever. Huh. Yeah. So I thought it's quite popular. Yeah, really. no, I've never <laughs> seen that one. But I will, I'm going to give you some insight, okay? Okay. And I'm not trying to um, uh, say anything bad about Armstrong Garden Centers. We're all in this boat together. together. Sure. You know, in terms of nurseries. But I was at a Armstrong Garden Center this week, and they were receiving their citrus shipment, and they were receiving five-gallon containers of citrus. I, I tell you, is it they, early? They were no, it's fine. Okay. But they, maybe were the size of a one-gallon plant. Really? Yeah, fully ready to be put out on their sales floor. Just really small. And is that because that's all that's available? That's all that's available. Oh my God. There is there is very minimal available. But you know you know who might have those avocados and you have to go there and it's actually by your house. Have you been to Clawson? In Vista? Yeah. No. Okay, they might have those avocados. But he's also the kind of guy that like you have to go there because you'd be like, Hey, do you have this? And I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know. Come here and come well, here. Well, there's a couple avocado growers in Fallbrook I could check too, Maddock and Atkins. Oh, okay. So maybe I will check there, but I, I don't know. But yeah, so um, it's it's tough for citrus in Southern California right now. Yeah. Dale asked if our show only goes till 9:30. It, it's Did still. Did you hear a, what I wrote? Yeah, it's a two-hour show on the radio. Mine is commercial. Right. So when you take the commercials off. Yeah. Which is a good thing. Yeah, right. we don't have the commercials, but Biz Talk Radio full two hours. Hey, that is uh, going to do it. We're that, we're that much closer to the end of the show. And okay. uh, thank you for the nice comments today. Glad you enjoyed the show. Da Apologize um, for the beeping. We'll get some <laughs> new batteries for oh, Tiger yeah, there'll be no for beeping next, by week. next week. But like John said, that was just warning you that hey, we're getting toward the end of the yeah. show. Yep. But no beeps next week. We've got the batteries in the budget. Beep, beep. <laughs> so beep, beep. Thank <laughs> you for the entire crew. <laughs> Go Roadrunner. We're going to give Daniel some credit, Tiger Palafox, John Bagnasco. I'm Brian Maine. Thank you for watching, tuning in. Those on BizTalk Radio, much appreciated. We're having so much fun, we're going to do it again next week, same time, at uh, six minutes after the hour here on Garden America. Have a great week, a safe weekend, and just be safe in general. Take care.